you know, what uh, is that uh, Mike Parrott got killed off and, and the fans revolted, flew an airplane with a banner, and so they, no. yeah, so they brought me back. That's super awesome. And, and they, they brought me back. And, and what's interesting is, is uh, it, it was so touching to me because, you know, as an actor, you, you, you I mean, social media now, you, you get a better grasp as to your connection with fans. But yeah. prior to that, you know, you, you, you don't realize how you affect people. Then all of a sudden, you, you you see everything you've done and like the effect it really has on people. And it was such a, an incredible experience for me as, a, as an actor because you know you realize why you're doing it. You know you do you realize who you're doing it for. So it was very fulfilling. Was she up to six this morning as well? <laughs> <laughs> Ah, yes. Daniel? Yes. Um, what do you think about the, my community living and Justin Huntley replacing it? Um, you know what? I, I think Justin hit the ground running really well. I yes. think he's very good at what he does. Yeah. I think he plays the character extremely, extremely well. Um, and I don't think Michael Muniz suspected or expected that someone was going to come and replace him so effectively. Uh, as you see the way the Billy uh, Miller, the Billy Abbott recast went after Billy Miller left, um, which didn't fare that well. Um, but no, Justin, I mean, I mean, the, Justin is right now the, the, the keystone of the show and everything standing around him, you know. Uh, so, you know, good for him. You know, I think he's doing a great job. and. You know, I mean, that's what you want. It seems, I mean, it, this is a team sport. I don't want some actor to, to replace another actor and tell them to suck. Because I don't, then the show sucks. You know, I want the best team we can have. The best actors, the best directors, the best writers, the best of everything. Because then the show's better for it. And you guys get a better show. And then you yeah. guys enjoy your show. And well, we enjoy it anyway. <laughs> True. Yeah. True. Um, yeah, but that's 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 what I that's what I like to see. I like to see actors come in. But also for the actor, I don't want to see an actor come in and struggle. You know, I don't want to see an actor come in and have a hard time with, with the show. I mean, you see a lot of because you, we've had some prime time actors come in and do guest spots, and they fall under the pressure. It's it's it'd be like being a boxer and having to have six fights back to back. You know, as opposed to having a training camp and prepare for one fight and have one fight. You know, because that's what they're used to. And, and they literally just fall under the pressure. And um, then you have someone like Ray Wise. And it has very specific tools. Yeah. For example, you would never audition for your show the same way you would audition for Game of Thrones or something on HBO. Meaning it is a very specific skill set right. that some actors try to adopt or try to acclimate with their own user but say it's sitcom. Yeah. And you try to go in and, and you're missing rhythms and your beats and yeah. basically like you're standing on the camera. Um, understanding of three jokes for people, whatever it yeah. might be. Um, it, it, there are different styles of performance depending upon the show that you are in, uh, the show that, whether it's feature, whether it's television, it's different styles of performance. Right. Um, and that always, I, I mean, I'm not over uh, the active ability to master that formula and carry the volume of the right. script the night before, shooting four episodes the next day. Yeah, yeah I, I think. For me, I, I'm, 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 to, to counter a little bit what you said, like I'm a big believer in as long as it's real. I mean, I'm not a fan of soapy acting, and I, I, I've seen some performance on other shows where I'm kind of like, like I'll watch the daytime memories and I'll, and I'll see someone who's nominated. And if you won't see who's nominated, it's the dude who's screaming and the girl who's crying. And if you play anything really close to the best, if you play it really real and solid, there will be no love for it, you know. So. No, there's an audience expectation. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And like, I'll be on the set, and, and like, there were scenes where when Kane found out that Lily, Lily tells Kane that she slept with Joe, and how I wanted to play the scene versus how a couple of the, the people who were in the position to tell me how to play the scene. I mean, it was chalk and cheese because they wanted being a bravado, and I'm like, for a start, you know, if someone ever drops a hammer on you like like that, you, you don't click straight away. It, you've got to go through the process of there's shock, then there's metabolizing what you've heard, then there's how do I deal with the situation, then finally in the fourth scene or third scene you may show the anger but then you realize that that's not going to fulfill the, your character objective. And the other hard thing about daytime too is you don't know where the character's going. 
So like at least in film, or maybe in, in a long run or, or serial based show, you may have an idea of where you're going, so you can steer it in that direction. Like you might play a scene one way, and then the next week they've got you playing it a different way because they're writing it differently, and you're kind of like, oh shit, how do I fix that? On the, this scene that you're referencing, what ended up being the take? Did you, were you, did you have to give them that larger pass? No, on, on the death scene or? No, the, the, oh, the, the scene? No, 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 I, I wouldn't do it. So you do what you want to do? I do what I want to do. Because, you know, there, there's, a, there's a great quote. It's great courage. Yeah, there's, there's a great quote from... Uh, you say, I got a fucking banner, man, to this yeah, guy. Yeah. I'll do whatever the fuck I want. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, no, because, I mean... If it doesn't ring true to me, I don't feel like I'm, it's real, like I can't do it. You know, a lot of people I think they really dig and it's just over the top. It's because they don't know why they say what they're saying, they're saying words. You know, and I, I just find that good. What's your relationship with the United States? Your relationship with the United States? I met some writers in the daytime every side, no idea who they were. Because we don't know the writers. The writers live around the country. They're in Boston, they're in, out, they're in Mississippi, they're in Atlanta, they're in... Colorado, so because now it's as a writer, you can just write an email, everything in. So uh, I've been, met a couple of the writers. Uh, well, it'd be interesting. We'll get a script and we'll look through who wrote the dialogue because the head writer doesn't write the dialogue. Well, he just he comes up with a story. Then there's an outline writer and then there's a dialogue writer. So what we'll do is we'll see who wrote the dialogue, and it's interesting. Like you go, okay, that's so and so. So you kind of expect it. You know where it's going to go because the way they'll write you versus somebody else is rather different. So. Um, yeah, I mean, we don't change much of the stuff we're given, but I mean, I had some dialogue the other day where where it's just not what I would say, so I could keep the crux of it there, keep all the key points, and then reword it as to how I would say it, because then it's more tripling off the tongue, and, and it makes more sense, and there's more honesty, which all I hear about when it hits the air is that it, it makes honesty. How far in advance do you know what you're going to take? I think we're about six weeks in the morning. About six weeks. During the writer's strike of uh, 07, it got down to like, I think six days. And we would have to go on live. I think General Hospital shot a live episode, uh, maybe half a month, back, six months back, half a year back. They shot a live episode. And everyone was excited for it. I'm like, what are you excited for? Yeah, it's like, you know, I remember doing theater, man, opening night. And I was like, oh, I don't want to do that again. I mean, I'll do it again. That was, that was that was like. We should do a play together. Yeah. Yeah. It was intimidating. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. as long as you, I mean, the thing is, like, as long as you're down with dialogue, it is like my goal is to know my dialogue inside out, forwards, backwards, upside down. I'll learn your dialogue soon. So I always learn the other actors' drive dialogue as well, because then at least I I know that while they're talking to me, if there's something technical happening, like we'll have stuff where you know someone will move, and all of a sudden. You know, the camera's got to adjust, so you'll see a camera adjusting, then the boom will adjust, and it will pull you out of the scene. So it's good to always kind of get a vibe for what the scene's about and what they want out of the scene so you can play it as well. Do you guys do plays up at your school? That you do? Specifically in TV. Really? There are, there's a lot of theater schools in Toronto. Yeah. Um, originally, the concept was that I go to stage and school and focus. Um, I want to do a special one. Yeah. And do they get like a, uh, a wheel at the end of it? Like, is there a course where they can put a wheel yeah, together? Every single class is documented. Um, they don't have a wheel per se. They're kind of seeing their own techniques. Depending on what level of training they're at. I mean, we have classes for um, new actors. Uh, I will see classes for them. We have master classes. We have 59, 12, 13, 15, 16, 18, 19 through 39, and we have 40 and up. Right. So uh, the master classes um, all feature, we have a set that we use at uh, the studio uh, where uh, there is scene. Um, the vast majority of are very big on providing that kind of uh, and do you let them stay get, do you watch their work so they go, oh shit. So I remember I did a show for Beastmaster, which was shot on 35mm, uh, we shot 66 hours of it. And I remember I started watching the dailies. So I wanted to see what was coming across on camera. And I remember watching a couple of scenes I did, and I was like, oh, don't do that again. Absolutely. You know, and I, I, I started... Feel the way you learn. Well, yeah, but then I started getting too critical, and I stopped watching the day, because I realized 
I, I wasn't in the scene as much because I'd been watching it. Yeah, I was like, is this looking right? Is that looking right? Is that working? Is that not working? But then after a while, you do a dance. There's a process of separation. Right, absolutely. You're a bit, you're a bit, it's like anything. It's like you look like the baseball, there's a baseball on the TV. In the beginning, you're thinking, you know, keep the elbows up, elbows up, turn the, turn the hips. And after a while, once you get the hands down, 